Hello friends, my name is Theo, and today in this exciting Mesonier Media tutorial, we're talking about object removal inside of Fusion, inside DaVinci Resolve. Now, this is a very excellent feature that will just, oh, it's so nice to have it all in one package. So this makes DaVinci Resolve an even better editor, because this is just a nice thing for all sorts of stuff. So in this first shot, uh, the shot was graciously provided by Moises. We had a little live stream where I took a look at some footage that viewers sent me. So if you're into that, be sure to be subscribed to Mies Media YouTube channel. We're gonna start doing that more often. It was a lot of fun. So we'll you know, take a look at people's footage that they send. So here is a, a shot. This first one will be super easy. We're gonna remove this light switch off the wall. So this will be a nice introduction. You see completely still on a tripod, easy, easy. If you're doing like interviews or corporate stuff and then you see afterwards, oh, there's a trash can in the corner. It's an easy way to just paint that right out. So speaking of paint, the first thing we'll do is add a paint node. So control space to bring up our tool selection and type in paint and drops it right in line for us. We'll preview this and we only need one viewer for this guy. So we'll just hit this button here and we'll pull this down and you can see right away we get this different little cursor, this little green guy here. So this will be our paint brush. So you can see the green circle represents the size of the brush. And if we start painting right away, you see that's not really what we want. I mean, it's, it's fine. But what we're going to do instead is go to our apply mode and change this to clone and make sure that over here our brush is changed from multi-stroke to stroke. Multi-stroke will only do one frame by default, which is very annoying. So make sure you're on stroke. If you're, you're doing this and you see it's just one frame, make sure you're on stroke. That really tripped me up for a long time. It did on the live stream too. It's really embarrassing. So. The next thing we'll do is we'll define the source that we clone from. So hold down Alt and click. And that'll set our little X right there, which is where we're sampling from. And then we can just paint over right like this. And we can sample from the other side as well. And just that easy. Got a little bit at the top we should do. Nice. And I don't really like this bump here, so we'll... Drop another one on. Now we're looking good. And if we play through, you can see, look at that, gorgeous. That light switch is completely gone. So, before and after. Look at that, amazing. Now, what if we have a little more complicated of a shot? Well, I got you covered there. So I'll hop over to this shot and we'll remove another light switch from a wall because I tell you what, art directors hate light switches. All right, and now we can see in this shot, we've got another light switch and the camera actually moves. So let's see how we're gonna go about removing this one. And there's like some lighting changes over it too. Real interesting. So hit control space and we'll drop in another paint node. And let's do our same process as before. We will select stroke and make sure we are on clone mode. We can increase our brush size a little bit. So I'll bring this up and I'll click to define our source and then make sure we're viewing our paint node. Otherwise we won't see what we're doing. And just paint that in a little bit and go on the bottom part and paint this in a little bit. And that's looking pretty good. And now, like we said before, we play this through and that doesn't look great. So what we're going to do is modify this with a tracker. So we'll go over to our modifiers tab and you see right now we've got three strokes. This third one's an empty one just because Fusion always creates one after the last one you did to get ready to go. But you see we click off into our selection tool and automatically deletes that. So we're going to box select these two strokes. And instead of tracking both these individually, because that would be an absolute pain, especially if you have like 50 of them, that would suck. We're gonna use a paint group. So we'll group these guys together. You see now we got this one called paint group. And we open this up you can see we can access a couple controls. We can also show our subgroup controls, which will let us access what we had before, which is very nice. So super easy, very excellent tool to have there. And we'll right click on center, go to modify with tracker position. So now we've got this tracker modifier up here. We'll change our tracker source from nothing to our media in source and we'll go ahead and just track this forward and you can see since this is referencing the node before it doesn't matter that we have our paint group on so just like that tracked away pretty nice and now if we play through 
it actually works. Look at that. So we'll view our media out so we don't see that other stuff. And nice, maybe, see we get a little bit of the corner there. So that's because the tracker automatically snaps our paint group to the center of our paint group to the center of the tracker. So what we can do is go back to modifiers and our paint node, go to our tracker and change the X offset and the Y offset. So we get something that's looking pretty good. Let me actually go into our subgroup controls and I'll select stroke one. And I'll actually make the brush size a little bit bigger. Just we really don't have any issues. So there we go. Now we've got that. You see, even through lighting changes and other stuff, as long as your sources are clean, you get this really excellent thing. So just like that, nice and easy. Very cool to have this built in with Resolve if you're a colorist or an editor or visual effects person. Then, you know, you've got this tool built right in. It's very excellent. The paint tool infusion is very cool. It's got a lot of excellent features that I'm sure we'll go more in depth with later. But for now, I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial. If you like, give it a like. If you didn't, give it a dislike. No matter what, leave your feelings down in the comments below. Check out mistermedia.com slash products for some cool LUTs and stock footage and other stuff that you can use to spice up your footage. Subscribe to the channel so you can be notified of more tutorials or when we do another live stream in the future, you can send your footage in for that. Footage is only available to take in whenever I put up a video about it because, you know, believe it or not, it fills up semi-fast. And also be sure to leave a comment down below about all the times where you have had to remove a trash can from a corporate interview video. So once again, I've been Theo with Meesner Media. Have a great day and I will see you next time. Bye.